Hello and welcome to Joseph Data, Data Analysis for Curious People. In this video, I want to uh, use R's built-in functions to analyze built-in data, built to analyze a built-in data set. R has built-in data sets, so let's get going. So in order to see R's built-in data sets, we call the data function and it returns the information. So these are all R's built-in data sets. The one I want to take a look at is called empty cars, very popular. But what you're going to see from this is more how to analyze the built-in data sets. So let's first call a class function on empty cars. And the class function will show us what type of object this um, what type of object this object is. Uh, what type of information it's a, it's a it's a data frame so this information is stored as a data frame so that is good to know so then we can apply functions for data frame so head of empty cars will return the top part and you can see it over here the top part of the data frame and we see we have one two three four five six seven eight nineteen eleven columns we have these rows uh, showing the car and the different information about that car miles per gallon cylinders displacement horsepower and so on we can also analyze the bottom end of it empty cars and that's the bottom end of it a great function you can use is called the summary function and you call that on a data set on a, on a data frame and here we've got a summary of the different columns the different variables so here we've got miles per gallon and in it we see the minimum the first quartile median the median the mean the third quartile the max so min and max are the smallest values which that's 10.4 miles per gallon and then the max will be the highest value uh, so it's 33.9 miles per gallon so we've got an idea here of the smallest and the biggest value in the miles per gallon column we also show the first quartile that is um, th it's the first quarter like up until the value up until the first quarter and then here's the value up until the top of the third quarter. It's 22.8. Then we have the median uh, and then the mean. The mean is the average and the median is the, is the middle value. So the mean is the average. So that's taken by adding up all the values and then dividing it by however many values you have. And that's the median. So that's the summary function. Okay. Let's now, um, I want to look at the cylinders and the horsepower. So what I want to do is I want to create, I want to subset cylinders. So what I've done here is I've created a variable and here's the object. And what I've done is I've used this dollar symbol to subset the cylinder column from empty cars so let's run that there's no errors then i want to create one for horsepower empty cars dollar hp so let's run that again so i've just created two objects here a cylinder and horsepower so now what i can do is i want to plot the density plot of let's do horsepower okay so this is the argument and the argument I'm passing into this function is this object which is this column it's a horsepower column so if I now run that you will see that this plot is generated uh, and the great thing about using our studio is you can easily export that as an image here so what this shows us it's the distribution of the data uh, and it's nice and smooth, which is better than histogram. And so here on the bottom, you've got the, what's this, the horsepower. So we see that the, 
the majority of the values in this data set sit around or would this be like 80 to 150 so most of them sit here we see a little bit of a bump here so we know that there, there's sort of a, another cluster here so that's the density of these values we could also plot same for cylinder if we wanted to let me just show you that quickly and here we'll see a different plot and here we see that the majority of the cars have got eight um, a horse, uh, cylinders have got eight cylinders and then after that comes four cylinders and then six cylinders is the bottom okay right what we're going to do now is I want to move on and I want to plot I want to look at the relationship between cylinder and horsepower so I'm going to use this plot function and I'm going to use cylinder and horsepower now I'm just going to plot this straight away and this is what is generated so what you see here is cylinder on the x-axis horsepower on the y-axis so as cylinder increases so does horsepower and then you see these clusters because um, the types of cars that we use are only a four cylinders, six cylinders, or eight cylinders. And as the number of cylinders increases, the horsepower increases. So there's kind of a linear re relationship. Now, I want to keep this video under 10 minutes. So I'm not going to um, add on to... So there, there are a number of other interesting arguments that you can add into the plot function. I will do that in the description below this video but just for the sake of time I'm just going to leave it as that although maybe let me just add in the type of shape so PCH gives the the type of shape that is generated here so 17 is a triangle and then color green okay so now if I if I call this function, you see now we've got triangles in green. So you can style it. So we see there is a linear relationship and it's directly proportional. So as cylinders increases, horsepower increases. I want to just do one last thing and let's take a look at the uh, linear model function. So LM. And what this basically does is the LM, uh, it will create... Um, a straight line through my data set so the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to call this this function and the first argument is the dependent and the second is the independent variable so in this case I want to make uh, horsepower the uh, dependent and the independent variable I want to make cylinders so basically what I want to do is to work out okay if I have so many cylinders what will the horsepower be so horsepower is the dependent one so what we do we do HP we do the little tiddle and then we write cylinders okay so what this is basically done I don't, I don't know if you can see down at the bottom is it's generated a line through here you can't see it I'm gonna plot it in a second but there that's the intercept uh, these are the two coefficients of my line. So LM and then HP and cylinder. Now you, you could also, it might be um, another way of doing this is by actually doing data is equal to the data set which is empty cars. And then it's going to do the same thing. It's going to produce the same results, but it's sometimes better practice to include this argument and then then you don't need to create these objects you just write the column name which in this case is HP and cylinder so it's not going to affect the results but there is the formula the formula is there and then and yes I actually could have named the argument to formula formula there we go okay that looks better so the formula is the name of the argument and then I, I assign this is my dependent this is my independent so independent will be on the X dependent will be on the Y and now let's just quickly a B line that is 
AB line is is a function to draw it. So let's just go X. Let's just make a variable X quickly and let's run that. Now if I call X, what you see is going to happen is see it plots a straight line through this. So what that will tell me is that if I have five cylinders, I can expect that my horsepower will be around this amount. And if I have seven cylinders, my horsepower will be around, you know, if I had to draw a line up from seven to this line and then across, it'll be that many horsepower. And to end off then, if I want to actually turn this into some sort of easy to use online widget or form of some sort, I can use this intercept in the simple y is equal to mx plus c uh, function. Okay, so that's the end of the video. That is something of how you can analyze our built-in data sets using built-in functions. Have a fantastic day.